For the first couple of weeks, we talked about perspective and uh, subjectivity and, you know, a couple of really short stories. And so this week, we started to sink our teeth into uh, stories that have a little bit more meat and substance. And the first story that uh, I assigned you to read was the Grace Paley um, short story of a Conversation with My Father. Now, I talked about metafiction in uh, a written lecture. And this is not metafiction in that it calls attention to the fact that it is fiction. And a lot of modern fiction does that. I shouldn't say a lot, but some. John Fowles is really good at it. Uh, authors, when they first began to write novels, would do that as well. And, for example, the Brontes or Austin would directly uh, address the audience and say, My dear readers. So you were constantly aware that you were reading an account. Now... Paley's story is, is uh, a little different than that. It is told in um, first person, and she is recounting. Now, the narrator, and I'm going to say she because it is written by a woman, but we have to be careful about assuming, uh, you know, that the narrator, one sex or another, or something about the narrator. But, you know, I'm assuming that it is, uh, well, it is a she. And she's talking about a conversation that she has with her dying father. And this brings up the responsibility of the author. Now, Paley says on page 31, and I pointed this out in the, written, uh, the written lecture, that she, um, the absolute two points, or the absolute line between two points, which I've always despised, not for literary reasons, because it takes away, it takes all hope away. Everyone, real or invented, deserves the open destiny of life. And this line is important because it is symbolic of her relationship with her father. She tells her father a story and he is dissatisfied. He is dissatisfied because there is that hope there. It is open-ended. And uh, he's saying, you know, sometimes there, there is no hope. Sometimes you have to accept what there is. And, and he doesn't say this to her outright. Instead, he asks for another story of a different kind. And so she um, tells him another story. And uh, it's, it's a little bit, you know, different. And, uh, and it goes on and it goes on until uh, finally the end of the story. When he says to her... Um, how long will it be, he asks. Tragedy, you too. When will you look it in the face? So what he's saying to her is that her responsibility is not to give these characters hope, but to be realistic and to understand that tragedy is a part of life. She can have the son recover from his drug addiction in her fiction. But is that always the way it is in real life? No, it isn't. And also on page 34, she said, um, I promised the family to always let him have the last word when arguing, but in this case, I had a different responsibility. What is that responsibility? In this case, it's not to her father, but it is to this character that she has created. And what Paley is basically saying, that the author is God. The author decides who lives and who dies in fiction. Now, of course, if you're writing, you know, a biography, that would be different. But in fiction, the author is God. The author can be omniscient, uh, you know, but what happens to those carries is up to her. So she sees her responsibility not towards her father, but for her characters. And her responsibility is to leave it open-ended and to give hope. But her father disagrees. And her father just thinks that she is shirking, uh, looking death in the face. She is denying that her father is going to die. And not only is she denying that her father is going to die, but she is ultimately denying her own mortality. And uh, in the story, she might be able to do anything that she wants to do, but real life isn't like that. And in real life, her father is going to die. And in real life, maybe the son isn't going to get over his drug addiction. And maybe the mother isn't going to be blessed or whatever. So uh, that is a bit of what Paley's story 
uh, is about. And it is about the author's responsibility. It is about the responsibility of the reader as well to demand something different, which is what her father does. So um, that's how I take this story. And if you have a different take, remember, it's all about perspective and subjectivity.